When you configure a Synology NAS following best practices, one of the suggestions is to use BTRFS for your volume. This is so that you can utilize snapshots and data scrubbing, which can help protect from data loss and increase data integrity. However, in order for data scrubbing to work properly and ensure that you don't lose any of your data to silent corruption, it has to be configured properly, which is not done by configuring data scrubbing only. In fact, it's actually a lot more confusing than that. So the question is, how can you configure data scrubbing properly and why do you need to do it? Well, that's where it can get confusing. So we're gonna to have to start from the beginning. When you store a file on your Synology NAS, you're adding that data to a shared folder, which is part of a volume, and that volume is part of a storage pool that's generally utilizing SHR or RAID. Now on the shared folder itself, there's a setting called Enable Data Checksum for Advanced Data Integrity. When you enable this, which is only gonna be available if you're using BTRFS as your volume, a checksum is stored as soon as the data is written to the shared folder. Think of a checksum as a bunch of random letters and numbers that is stored as metadata to indicate that when the file was created, this is what the checksum was. This is designed to be the checksum for the file in its best state because it's written as metadata as soon as the file is written to the RAID array. If you don't select enable data checksum for advanced data integrity when the shared folder is created, when a file is stored inside of that shared folder, the checksum won't be written, which means that when the data scrubbing process runs, there won't be a checksum to validate the current value against. This is an extremely important option that must be configured for data scrubbing to work properly. If it's not configured for your shared folders, I'll explain a little later what your options are. Moving on to the data scrubbing process itself, generally you'll set this to run on your storage pool and you'll do it at least twice a year. When this process runs, it goes one by one and checks each file and the checksum stored for that file. It does a comparison and if they match, the data scrubbing process will move on to the next file. If it doesn't match, the data scrubbing process will attempt to repair the file utilizing RAID and get the checksum that currently exists to match the checksum that was initially stored by fixing the file. I know it's confusing, but bear with me. From a data integrity perspective, these checksums should always match. To fix a file where the checksum doesn't match, the data scrubbing process will utilize RAID, and in specific, SHR with at least three drives, RAID 5, RAID 6 or RAID F1. If you're not using one of these options, data scrubbing will not be able to repair the file. So to simplify things, you have to have at least a four bay NAS for data scrubbing to work properly. All of this then leads us to the question, how does a file get to a point where the checksum is different today than what was initially stored? Now to be entirely clear, this is a very debated topic and I'm not here to play sides. I'm just here to provide what I understand to be the facts. As time goes on, something called bit rot which is generally known as silent data corruption can occur. The easiest way to understand this is deterioration of the integrity of the file. So you didn't actually do anything, but the file sitting there slowly deteriorated over time from not being accessed. Synology has a great blog article from a few years ago on data scrubbing that I'll link in the description. But in the article, they have an example of a picture where bit rot occurred, and I think it's the best way to understand it. It's not that the file is inaccessible, though that's something that can happen as well, but it's that the data stored degraded and a once clear picture is now destroyed. It's probably not gonna be as extreme as this example from a general perspective, but it's a good explanation. Using this example and taking data scrubbing into account, it's not necessarily that the data is gone, but the file has to be fixed to match what it was initially stored as. Think of it as trying to get this broken picture back to its initial state. So when the data scrubbing process runs, it will get to this file, see the checksum stored today does not match what was initially stored, and it will use RAID to fix the file. Now, there are a lot of assumptions here. You're using BTRFS, the shared folder is configured properly, and you're using SHR with at least three disks, RAID 5, 6, or F1. If you hit all of those requirements, after the data scrubbing process runs and fixes the file, the image that had a bunch of digital artifacts will now be back to its original state. When you hear things like self-healing, which is commonly used to describe the data scrubbing process, this is what they're talking about. The file had a problem, the data scrubbing process ran, saw that the checksum didn't match, and fixed it utilizing RAID without you doing anything. In most cases, files can be fixed without you even knowing it, and that's where the self-healing description normally comes from. So now that we understand all of this, this is the exact order in which you have to configure data scrubbing on a Synology NAS to ensure it works as expected. First, ensure that you configure SHR with at least three drives, RAID 5, 6, or F1. 
When you create your volume, make sure you create a BTRFS volume. If the storage pool or your volume on your Synology NAS doesn't match this setup and you want it to, your only option is to copy the data off and recreate the storage pool and volume. The only exception to that statement is if you're using a four bay NAS and only have two hard drives installed. In that scenario, you might be able to fix it by adding a new drive. Next, create a shared folder and make sure that the shared folder has the enable data checksum for advanced data integrity option enabled. If you have shared folders that are already created and this option wasn't selected, you cannot turn it on because it will not retroactively create the checksum for the data stored. So if the setting is not selected on one of your shared folders, your only option is to recreate the shared folder, enable the option, and then move your data from the old folder to the new folder. When the files are moved to the new folder, it'll store the checksum at that time. If you do this, Make sure you go in and configure snapshots and backups for the shared folder because none of that will be configured as you're basically starting over from scratch with a brand new shared folder. After the data is moved and everything is configured, you can get rid of the old shared folder. Finally, you have to enable data scrubbing. I like to run it quarterly, but the truth is twice a year is fine. As long as you're running it somewhat regularly, the data scrubbing process will fix any problems that it finds. You'll just know that from a data integrity perspective, everything is functioning as it should. Now I wanna say one final thing because I know it's gonna come up in the comments. If your data has been sitting there for years and the checkbox wasn't enabled on the shared folder, it is what it is. It's probably fine and it's not something to freak out about. But there is a small chance that bit rot occurred on a small subset of your data, which means that there can be some sort of corruption with a few of your files. When I said earlier that this is a highly debated topic, it's mainly because there are people who believe bit rot exists and happens frequently, and others who feel like it's an anomaly and very, very rarely happens. You can't go back and change anything. And if you weren't using a NAS with RAID, bit rot can occur as well, but there wouldn't be a way to actually fix it. So take it as an opportunity moving forward to increase the integrity of your data. And if you do happen to find a file that is corrupted, look through your backups and see if you can restore an older version of the file. Other than that, following these exact steps will allow you to utilize data scrubbing properly and assuming that it's configured properly, when the data scrubbing process runs quarterly or biannually, any potential issues that are found will automatically be fixed. I do want to say that I am drastically oversimplifying bit rot and probably even the entire data scrubbing process itself. But the only point I want to make is that this is a complex process that is fully reliant on a few checkboxes being selected right. Checkboxes that aren't entirely clear in terms of what they actually are, especially when setting up a shared folder. Another thing is there are a few Synology folders in specific that don't have the option enabled by default. These are generally created by Synology applications. So it's not as simple as saying that the data integrity options in the shared folder should always be enabled because that's not necessarily true. I just want you guys to keep that in mind when you're looking at your NAS. I'm hoping this video helped you out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.